morning and welcome back. We're now Monday, May 15th, and it is a beautiful morning out here. Sounds like we're in for a screaming hot week this week. Uh, sounds like especially north of Calgary area is supposed to be over 30 degrees. I don't think we're going to hit quite that here, but it will still be unseasonably warm. So we'll see what happens. There has been increasing reports the last few days of grasshopper nymphs hatching. So I'm going to be looking for those this week. This field here has a pretty good example of kochia control in here. You can see there's kind of a mix of dead and live kochia in here. So this was sprayed prior to seeding, which was about um, 8 to 10 days or so ago now. So you can see there's quite a few dead kochia in here that would have been killed during the pre-burn here. But since then we do have some new ones that have emerged, probably even just since those rain showers we had last week, those little thunderstorms went through this area. Some of these look like they are picking up a little bit of herbicide and they are a little bit worse for the wear, like these guys here are not looking particularly healthy. But some of them are still looking pretty good, but we'll have to take care of them in crop. This is seeded to wheat and it's mostly just emerging in one leaf right now. Here in this spot, in this field entrance, I don't know how well it shows up on camera here, but there is just thousands of these little tiny hoppers. These are probably just like second instar guys. They're really, really small. Let's see if I got a couple here. So still really small. I'm not sure exactly what species they are likely to stripe when they're this thick like this but uh, difficult to tell but uh, what i'm going to do here this morning is i'm going to spread around a little bit of eco brand here at this field entrance i'm going to come back through this area here in a couple days we'll see if it makes a difference here in this roadside patch these little grasshoppers really seem to be enjoying these dandelion flowers no doubt it's probably something really young and tender for them to feed on so it's working pretty well for them but uh, unfortunately, it's definitely a good food source. I'm not seeing any feeding damage on these young grasses here at the moment, but as these hoppers get bigger, it's only a matter of time. Well, although our topsoil conditions are getting very dry for, you know, small seeded crops like canola this week, our subsoil moisture is still pretty good here. You can see this wheat was seeded, you know, about a half inch deep. It was just on top of the moisture layer. It has germinated there. And I should find more seed underneath of it here. Yeah, yeah, there's the actual seed row down there. So these guys have germinated pretty good, it looks like. Of course, I lose them. There we are. So he's got a root out, and he's looking pretty good. He should do just fine. Here you can see we have a really thick patch of Canada thistle in this field. This field is going to be going into oats. And we did spray this about seven days ago now with glyphosate and DB878, which generally does a pretty good job on these emerged thistles. So you can see the growing points are already kind of bleaching out. And uh, these thistles, they might not all necessarily be controlled, but they will be significantly stunted and won't really be much of a problem for the growing season. The problem is that they're just continuing to flush. You can see like this guy's just emerged the last couple of days. So like he has definitely missed the application. Same with this guy right here. So there is still going to be quite a few thistles probably in this patch that we're going to have to take care of in crop. Well, a lot of these first seeded peas in this area are up and doing pretty good. This field has not even been rolled yet, but we are pretty much, we're at third node, fourth node is there, just not unfolded yet. So I'm going to be putting in a recommendation for spraying for this for next week for, uh, for Viper. If you're using Viper or Python, your spray staging is basically from three to six node. A node would be a set of open leaves, so easy enough to look for. I'm also not seeing any pressure from pea leaf weevil at all. It it's looking pretty good as far as that goes. Um, as far as weeds go, there is some kochia and stuff in this field. It's just kind of like spotty here and there. A lot of it, you know, a lot of this ground was treated with authority, but it hasn't really reliably activated because of our kind of sparse moisture conditions here in the topsoil right now. So not only the kochia, but there is a little bit of canola here and there as well. Authority, of course, does not control canola. Here's a good example of what to scout for for wireworms and barley. You can see this clump of barley here. There's a couple of yellowed off plants that weren't doing too terribly good. When you start looking in here, you can see that this one right here, that coleoptile has been chewed through, so that's not looking too terribly healthy there. And the next one right here beside it, might be a little difficult to see, but right at the end of my thumb, you can see that that coleoptile is actually split, so the wireworm has been inside of that feeding. And on this one right here, you can see that it has been chewed right off the seed. I did not find the wireworm himself when I dug up this patch of seed, but uh, pretty apparent from the damage exactly what it was. 
All right, I found my wire room about three seconds after I finished filming here. So this is a relatively small guy. He's still fairly active, which probably means he just started feeding because all these seeds have been treated with cruiser. So he's only probably going to get away with one or two plants and then he's going to start to go down from the uh, seed treatment. Here you can see along the edge of this field, we got a whole patch of lambs quarters here. This field did get sprayed with Enforcer M from New Farm just a few days ago. And you can see these guys are curling up and going down already. So I expect to see pretty good mortality on these guys. Well, the wind is getting worse and so is the smoke. Visibility now is down to less than a mile. I'm not quite sure what the wind is doing, but it feels like it's 70 to 80 out here. So it's a good test of my new microphone, see how good my wind noise is. Anyways, I'm out here in a cornfield. Some of them are just starting to emerge. Slip the camera around here. Ah, where was the one I saw here? Doo, 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 doo. Ah, right here. So you can see this corn is just starting to emerge here. There should be some more coming and on the way. You can see we do still have decent moisture down at seed depth. And that is because this field did get rained on right after seeding. So we haven't had to irrigate it up, which is good because there is no irrigation yet. Just checking behind a seed drill up here at Carmen Gay. You, as you can see, the soil here is very dry. There was basically absolutely no moisture in those thunderstorms up here last week. So we've got to go down about an inch to get to moisture here now. And uh, as you can see, that's about where our canola seed was here, just about an inch down. So hopefully it's going to get enough moisture to germinate here, but I wouldn't hold out on that. It might need to shower first. Another cool smoky morning this morning here out by Colhurst. Things are definitely a little overcast, not quite so bad as yesterday, and at least it's not windy yet. In this patch of this field here, we got barley, and as you can see, we have quite a weed emergence. There is an absolute pile of round leaf mallow starting to come up here. So you can see their first true leaves in that traditional mallow shape here. And right beside them, we of course have lamb's quarters in different stages of life here. This one's got its first real leaf out. And then right here, we actually have some pretty distinctive clumps of quack grass. So this is always a fun one. Quack grass, of course, comes up from rhizomes underground. And usually the best way to identify is to give it a good pull. It should be pretty resistant to pulling out from those rhizomes. But here you can see those distinctive yellow rhizomes that are going to spread underground and this stuff will pop up all over the place of course it is spread and encouraged by tillage so zero till is definitely the best way to manage it especially by spraying it out in the fall spraying it out in the spring here is generally not very effective here in this field of barley we do have a patch of volunteer canola and as you can see it is getting chewed up pretty good by flea beetles which is kind of nice because this is a weed in this situation here you can still see a flea beetle on this leaf here right here see if i can zoom in it looks like just a normal cruciferous no sign of striped flea beetles in this area that i've seen so far this spring but if this was an actual seeded canola field you would be at or around threshold and if feeding continued this way unchecked could be pretty severe so definitely keep an eye out on your canola fields i have seen very little feeding on any treated seed at the moment but the volunteer is starting to get chewed on pretty good here's a good example of just how small a wire worm can be you can see right beside this canola seed here we do have a tiny little wire worm i discovered while scraping the seed row so keep your eyes open these guys are so small they can escape detection pretty easily although they are still quite capable of causing damage fall rye this week is looking pretty good relatively great actually considering that it still has not received any irrigation at all we are now at this stage we're into stem elongation things are getting tall in a real hurry here so we're really picking up some height Heads are beginning to move up the stems with the nodes, but as you can see, our root zone is getting pretty dry here, so we're really going to need some rain here pretty quick, or for the canal to be fixed. And as of the newest update on that, it still doesn't look too terribly hopeful for a while. Well, we're now 48 hours post-application of EcoBrand. Grasshopper population continues to be present in this spot. However, there is the odd dead one on the ground here and there. See if I can focus on this little guy. You can see here where this ground is disturbed how many grasshopper eggs are actually in the ground here so i think part of the reason why we're still seeing them is just the fact that there is so many flushing ones that uh, they just keep coming basically 
a lot of the early seeded cereals, like this barley here, are just in the third leaf stage. So we're not quite at herbicide timing yet, and for the most part, the weeds are really small. This barley is only three leaf stage. Worst weed in here by far is volunteer canola, so we're probably going to come in here next week. And oh, and there's lamb's quarters here too. But we're probably going to come in here next week and hit this with Enforcer M or D and take care of these small weeds. And that'll be it for this week. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.